How's everyone doing? So, I don't know who, who, who follows the Instagram channel, um, or the YouTube channel also follows my Instagram page, but I posted this earlier in the week. It's, um, it's a Jan Sport, a vintage, late 80s Jan Sport Pathfinder pack. It's a civilian pack. Um, I posted, uh, I posted about it on Instagram. I made a post kind of describing what I did to, to baby poop it, to paint it. Um, so I just wanted to kind of go over what I, what you can carry in something like this, because as much as it, as much as everybody would like to not believe, but be like, okay, military-esque, military style, or even military surplus, like a large Alice pack or medium Alice pack is not necessarily the best way to do but like old school best school I beg to differ with with a pack like this um, let's start off <clears throat> external frame what I did I um, I cloth medical tape like white cloth medical tape like what you would wrap around like an ankle at a soccer game or boxers wrap around their wrists and fists I wrapped that around the entire painted the frame wrap that medical uh, cloth medical tape around the entire frame, painted that. Uh, then I had spray painted the inside of this pack because it was originally yellow. And then I let that dry and I spray painted the outside. Once the frame was entirely dry, once the pack was entirely dry, I then put it all together because these packs are just held together by nuts and bolts, screws and, and nuts. It's beautiful, it's an aluminum frame and you can take it apart and break it down to be small You can and then you put it back together. Um, so yeah, so I put it, I put it back together and then I baby pooped it. Uh, I did some big blotches of the, ref the dark green, the refined green, and then I did baby poop, the, the bay leaf, uh, the poop green yellow. Um, I wrapped the top part of the frame. Yeah, I don't know if that's in frame. I wrapped the top part of the frame with paracord. Para wrapped it for noise suppression. I did not wrap that with the cloth medical tape because I wanted to do that. Um, yeah, so let's, you, if you haven't watched my lot three line video, go watch that first and see what I carry with my pattern 83 chest rig, my nine molar belt and my rocket pack, my snug pack, rocket pack, ruck, line one, two, and three, chest rig one, bell kit two, ruck three. Go watch that video, then come watch this because I basically took the stuff from my ruck and put it in this, distributed it in this, with a couple little tweaks, all right? So we'll start with the external pouches first, and then we'll move to the inter the uh, two main bodies. All right, so on this side, I have uh, paracord gloves, uh, a big uh, wound bandage, whether a, a gash, a knife wound, uh, a wound from a stick, fallen down, a broken leg, even something, it, you can also use that to immobilize a broken leg. I have that, I have this small little, it's a hot beverage bag from an MRE, I have hand sanitizer, band-aids, a small, um, a small like camp knife, and a fire starter and a glow stick. This is kind of like a, uh, this is kind of like a pouch to grab, just grab this if, you know, I'm, st I, I'm stopped for a little while. It's kind of like a, an ouch pouch, basically. Um, or camp craft pouch, I guess you could call it. It's got like the essentials. Fire starting knife, light, it's not a flashlight. Um, fire starting, not a flashlight, uh, a knife, and hand sanitizer, because you don't want to be a nasty. You don't want to be a nasty motherfucker. So that's in there. That Some of that was in the top pouch of my rocket pack ruck that's why it's on the outer pouch all right this this bottom side pouch has a spare boonie hat i'm not going to pull it out because it's packed away it's not something i would necessarily need to get at like the stuff in these two pouches because it's a top pouch not a front facing pouch right so a spare boonie hat one ar mag and my back my backup hunting hunting 22 my Ruger SR 22 22 pistol um, I have that in there I, I don't have a suppressor I've never had a suppressor I don't think I'll ever maybe get a suppressor 
Um, I know that like a Ruger Mark II, Mark III with a suppressor is a good thing to do, but I don't really feel like paying. One, the obnoxious amount of suppressor is when it's really just a metal tube and baffles. And two, I don't want to pay a stamp tax. I just, I just don't pay enough taxes. So, in this bottom pouch, this is the toiletry bag that was inside, inside of my ruck, but at the very top. So if you just opened up the top flap, you can access the toiletry bag. Toiletry bag, um, so you can fucking go to the bathroom, you know, relieve yourself. Uh, this side pouch has a poncho. So my rocket pack, ruck, my snug pack ruck has two built-in rain covers. And then I have a bunch of different cloth camouflage pack covers. So I have a sleep, my Rhodesian Repro sleeping bag strapped to the bottom. That's one of the reasons why I like external frame, old school hiking external frame packs. Because I have this strapped to the bottom. This isn't waterproof, this is just a nylon material. It's a pretty water resilient nylon material, but it's not waterproof. I have that strap there. Right here in the front of this pouch is a poncho and a cravat or a, 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 a neckerchief, a head bandana. And then underneath that I have my strobe light, my VS-17 panel, and my note-taking stuff. So these two are like the ones where I would want to grab something out of relatively quickly. Obviously, toiletries is one thing, but like gear that I would want to have easy access to. So another question somebody posed when I post the picture is, well, what if the paint cracks and chips and flakes off? I'll re-fucking paint it. Because that's the, that's the thing that guys don't really realize is like, one, dudes in the military can constantly, especially dudes who are in a higher demanded, higher demanding job, can get their gear replaced relatively quickly because they need it, right? You need new, you need functioning working gear. So that's one thing a lot of civilians or vets who are no longer in the military, they don't have that at their disposal. When they buy something, they, Generally, what I've seen guys take care of their kit. They use it. They'll, they'll use it because it's a fucking tool, but they don't want to unnecessarily beat it up because then you have to replace it. Right? So, so like, let's just use the Reckies for an example. Any, well, really, any SSOF type unit as an example where they're, or infantry, where their mission tempo in a conflict is high. And so say you're going out on ops for six weeks and you've painted your pack and you've got all your kit and you come back and your paint's chipped and flaked. What do you think that guy's gonna do? If the pack is still work, good working order and he was out for six weeks and he's, now he's back for 10 days before he goes back out, what's he gonna do? Refit, quote unquote, refit and rearm. You're gonna fucking clean your gear, check your gear, make sure everything's working. And then like this, I've, I've taken this, this is the second time I've taken this out. Today was a nice nice canyon loop up here in the Lincolns, uh, Lincoln National Forest in the Sacramento Mountains. Um, it's rainy, so the, the paint is, is chipping and, f and, and a little flaky, but that's also this material. Another pack that I painted had like a very woolly denim type material where the, the, the paint absorbed into the material. This one, it's, it's waterproof, which is another reason why I don't really have a pack cover, but I have that poncho. Put that poncho on, it covers my body and this. And I also would use the poncho as like a shelter half. Uh, put, the po put the poncho up with the paracord, get some pine or spruce back, like if I was here in the, in the Sacramento's. Uh, paracord up, um, poncho as a shelter half, get some pine boughs. You want to use the underside because it's always the drier side. Pine bough bed. I have my my sleeping bag, and then I inside. Also, you'll see I uh, inside my dry bag. There's another reason why I kept the dry bag from my ruck. Inside the dry bag, I have mosquito net. You put that down, the mosquito net over that. Good to go out here. Temperatures here get down into the high 40s, low 50s at night still in June. So, all right, here's the main body of the pack. I have about so. I have about four days worth of food. I have my five quart canteen bladder, 
surplus canteen bladder. Uh, it's it's better. I can access the other one in here better. A 32 ounce of one quart square old school like OG Nalgene water bottle. So I've got four days worth of food. I've got five, six, seven, eight quarts. So I have two gallons of water, which up here with how wet and rainy it is, has been up here in the mountains, it's not as dry and arid. It's not as hot. Um, I probably would use two gallons. Yeah, it probably last me three days. So I have four days food, three days water on me. That's notwithstanding streams or, or puddles that you find here because of how wet it's been. And it's not arid. It's high mountains. You know, I'm at, I think, I think I'm at like 9,000 something feet right now. So, okay. So food, water, and then in here in this dry bag, I have socks, skivvies, a t-shirt, um, no extra camis, the mosquito net, and my moccasins. You watch the, the uh, three line video, you'll understand why I have the moccasins. So I have that in there. The reason I kept the dry bag, discussing with a couple other dudes through social media, uh, dudes who are very knowledgeable, um, because I normally in an arid environment wouldn't have that. They wouldn't carry a dry bag in an arid environment. The reason I have this is because one, there's a lot of transitional areas here where I am in the Southwest. There's also the Rio, which snakes up through New Mexico and cuts through two of the areas I like to go. Now, if I had to do a river crossing, that's a completely different fucking, not wheelhouse, not, not wheelhouse. It's just a completely different topic. I have this that I can use as a, a flotation device. It's actually one of the ways that they designed it in Vietnam. And I have the dry bag that I can fill full air, tie off, and tie. Use these straps to my pack. Put that to my pack, keep my pack up. It won't have the fucking nine pounds of water, 10 pounds of water. So it's even lighter, right? Um, empty this out, empty the canteen out of water. I'm at a river, trying to cross the river. Empty the water out, I have a way to refill it, so it doesn't matter. Empty the water out, fill it full of air. It's got these little corner ties. Tie that to the corner of my webbing, or something like that, the back of my webbing, whatever, however you want to do it. Uh, this, is, this is now an empty space in here, less space. I take the stuff that's in here, throw it in there, zip it up, this point I'm doing a river crossing I'm not gonna be able to keep all my shit dry fill the um, fill the dry sack full of air use these outer straps to strap to the top of the pack pack floats rifle on top of the pack pack floats I've got the water bladder as a flotation for myself it's another reason why I like the external frames too this is this exposed part of the external frame on the top has um, has a place I have two of these five quart bladders I can just tie the other one to the top of that one or to the top of the frame so there's that compartment it's a big main compartment and then under here is more gear oriented stuff so in here I have oh, what's going on I have e-tool, here's, this is what they look like, little uh, one quart. I have e-tool, my nods, this is a med, my med kit I've expounded on a little bit. I've added things like, what's this one, uh, Imodium, get it up to the stomach, eat the shits. This one, oh, Malarum. This is anti-malaria pill, especially once it starts getting more wet here in the southwest, along the rivers, up in the mountains, mosquitoes come out. So also just to go other places too, to the southeast, to the dirty, where there's swamps. It's a good thing to have. I also added a bunch of lidocaine patches that I have. Um, those are great. Sore at the end of a long day of hike, uh, rucking, hiking, whatever you, mover, uh, movement maneuvers, whatever you want to call it. It's nice to be able to, to lay down and put that on a sore shoulder or a, a sore back. Um, so there you go. So that is meds, e-tool, and uh, knots, and the sleeping bag. So there you go. 
and you know you mod your stuff to how you want it so i'm going to repaint this probably in another week or so maybe after i use it one more time and then just do it keep doing that keep painting i got my brn 180 needs to <laughs> needs a new paint job i want to get a new charging handle for it but it definitely needs a new paint job it is worn out in a lot of spots so all right well hope you guys enjoyed that you can see the difference between my the stuff how i pack my snug pack in this that's another thing i like about um these civilian external frame packs is it distributes look how long this is that is from below my ass to above my neck how it's distributed on my back and it's flatter um you know freaking an Alice pack is about this big, where the frame is about this big of the pack, and then it comes out farther, pu pulling you back. I feel like it pulls you, like things like Alice packs pull you back, pull you away. So that's another reason I, I do like civilian packs. I've had a couple in the past, but I've used the, my snug pack for, like I've said, 15 years now. So, and another thing that... I like about the civilian trucks they have these little the hip wings look at that it's like a kickstand <laughs> so there you go hope you guys enjoyed that little show and i guess you could call it show and tell um yeah so we'll be uh coming back at you maybe somewhere else with this all right have a good one